Hi, my name is John, and uh, I want to talk to you a little bit today about the shamanism that I offer. Um, I've trained with different indigenous cultures and spiritual practices and, and shamans from all over the world for the last 23 years. And I started working with a northern Native American medicine woman who got me started into the ways of the Americas. And then I started working with the Caro Indians of Peru. And uh, through a, uh, a gentleman named Alberto, Dr. Alberto Vialdo and his uh, the Four Winds Society and his Healing the Life Body School. He spent 25 years uh, living and studying with the Caro and bringing back and bridging their worldviews and their techniques and their medicine, their shamanism to the, the Western world, to our villages that we live in now of, of 22 million. And so, um, so the Caro are, are fascinating uh, in that they've been completely isolated for the last 500 years. They've been living at 18,000 feet in the Andes, um, in villages that are still a three days journey by horseback if you can find them. And it was that that <clears throat> allowed them to maintain their worldview and their mythologies that are very earth-based, very feminine-based, and untouched by the Western masculine-oriented warrior mythologies, if you will. We'll talk more about the mythologies in a little bit. But the, um, so, so my work, so I've been initiated by them. The training of a shaman is to go through a you know, healing process, a clearing process, to learn the wisdom teachings, and then to get a, a transmission that happens sort of forehead to forehead that connects us to a lineage of healers um, that show up when we show up and that actually do the work. And, um, and we're just really the mediators, we're the bridge, and we hold space, and we make it a safe and non-judging space. But shamanism itself is a very pragmatic and practical um, approach to improving your quality of life, basically. Uh, it's not so much a spiritual or a mystical tradition, although we work with the non-physical forces of nature. Uh, it's not, a, it's not a, a mystical tradition in the sense that we're used to in the West. And so, for example, the first shaman might have been the person who kept the fire burning in the village, who figured out how to warm her family uh, with fire, or that figured out the, the animal migration patterns for the hunt, or figured out the cycles of the seasons to, to plant the seeds when we became agrarian. And, and then, you know, became the bone setters and the herbologists and the psychologists and the myth makers and the storytellers. And so it was always the person who maybe figured something out before the rest of the village and then brought it back. So, um, in that sense, really, again, shamanism is geared towards that very practical and pragmatic aspect. My teachers would say that, you know, you can have a spiritual experience, you can, you know, feel one with great spirit and, and, and experience that connection and all of that, but then so what? How do you grow corn with it, is what they would say, because otherwise it's just interesting conversation. So the, um, so the way that it works is basically the shamans see life on four layers. And we're very used to two of them in the West. It's where we intervene mostly with our, with our healing modalities and our work and, and, and trying to change our lives. And we've lost the touch with the other two layers, which is where the shamans mostly do their work. And I'll explain these layers. Basically, it's sort of each layer informs the next. So it's sort of like those Russian nested dolls. And uh, the outer layer is the literal experiences that you have in this world, the real world that we're used to, the physical world of atoms and molecules. And, um, the, and to the shamans, this is the most important thing. It's the leading edge of creation. It's what we came here for. It's the theater. It's the drama. It's the place of contrast, of pleasure and pain, where we're able to, you know, where there, where without pain, you wouldn't know pleasure because it's, it's the contrast, and, and it would just be monotonous otherwise. But ideally, of course, it's pleasure, 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 pain, pleasure, 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 pain, and not the other way around. So this is the difference, but your experiences that you're having in this literal world is, is, is really what it's all about. And the idea, the whole point of shamanism is to get you to a place of, of power and freedom to be able to create and ask for more of the experiences you want and less of the ones you don't want. There's always room for contrast because it is the theater. And, um, and it's the place that they believe we can't wait to keep coming back and playing in. It's kind of like Disneyland. I mean, go away for a little while, we can't wait to come play again another 80 years or 100 years. 
and they see life. And so this, the outer layer is the, the literal. And it's based on your experiences. It's not necessarily the literal forms and mechanisms and manifestations, but the core experience behind them. Because five people can witness the same event and have five different experiences of it, from, from horror to bliss. And so this is really about you know, the experience that is brought to you through different mechanisms and that you call on and you ask on. And that's the second layer. The second layer is the psychological or psycho-spiritual layer. It's, it's your thoughts and beliefs. It's, what, it's the signal you're constantly sending out. It's the ask and, and it is given. You're always asking. It's always being given, whether you're conscious of it or not and whether it's for something you want or not. So again, the shamanism is to get you that place where you're more deliberately and consciously asking for more of what you want less of what you don't want. And it's based on the ability to be sending out that that signal. And, um, and so, and we get this in the West. We know Think and Grow Rich, you know, it was written in the 1950s. We understand the law of attraction, the secret, you know, all this, you know, prayer, meditation, contemplation, um, uh, cr you know, creative visualization, all of that's happening on that psychological layer. And it certainly helps to be able to, to practice that because we can do things the hard we can try to change our life by changing the job, changing the relationship, getting the surgery, killing people that disagree with us, you know, doing all of this kind of thing, which is kind of the long, hard way. Or we can think more positive, pray, get the therapy, read the books, meditate. And that also takes time, but it is, it is useful and helpful and can make it easier to make the changes you want. But the thing is, while nobody can create our experiences for us, we can be influenced. And so those influences can come from people around us, our current situation, the current reality, by the statistics uh, that we're told this is and isn't possible, you're going to die from this, you know. And if we believe those influences, then the universe makes us right. So in a sense, everybody's right. And it's, you know, every religion is right. It's just the question of really what do you want to be right about? So, so we can be influenced by people around us. <clears throat> and and this is all we, we get in the West so far. And what there is, is there's these other two layers that have a profound influence on us as well, but it's more unconscious. It's not like a room full of people telling you something. This comes from a very deep subconscious part of our life, and this is where the shamans intervene. They know that it's powerful to intervene at these, at these deeper layers that are further upstream, so to 